Hello, everyone. I am live on Facebook. And like many of you, doing uh, much less than what I've been normally doing. <laughs> I told uh, a number of you on social media that I would go live at 7.45. So I am technically about five minutes, sponge minutes early. I hope most of you enjoyed your iftar and ate tons of pakore, uh, which is one of my favorite foods anyway. Um, oh, hey, we got a guy watching in Louisiana. How awesome is that? I am so excited. Undead Islam watching in Louisiana. That's my home. Yeah, that's my home state. Uh, but I consider myself more of a Texas girl, cowgirl, if you will. Um, hello, everyone. Great to see you. How many of you on Facebook? I have a question regarding social media. I know a lot of you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, but a lot of you are not uh, on my Twitter. And so I'm wondering how many of you have been following our conversations, uh, our interesting conversations. Sometimes, you know, Maria or Dutti Putti Hey Tikana. So, Twitter fights, <laughs> arguments, uh, or whatever the case is, uh, which I think is uh, can be good and it can be healthy especially for a mixture of cultures uh, and being in Pakistan for a number of years now. I think it's quite uh, fascinating. Um, great. So there are a lot of you that are uh, sending messages, and I'm thrilled to see you all. Hello, Daniel. Good to see you after a long time. Yes, I'm doing well here in Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, we are well fed. The streets are remarkably clean and quiet. And I, I have to give props to uh, the security services, the law enforcement agencies, and, and the first line responders here in Pakistan for doing a wonderful job at um, keeping us safe and doing the best that they can with what they have. So I'm, I'm definitely thrilled. This is a unique uh, time for a lot of us, I think, around the world. And to be here in, in Pakistan, I actually had a choice, and a number of folks that I knew, and, and several Americans that I know that work for State Department or that work for the U.S. Embassy, they had an opportunity to fly back home or stay here in Pakistan. And they chose, most of them that had the choice that I know, chose to stay here in Pakistan. Um, so it's we're happy and we're we're safe considering the circumstances. So we're thrilled about that. Uh, so one of the questions that uh, Mohammed Tariq asked, "Where are you now?" I am in Islamabad, Pakistan. This is my uh, second home. I'm glad to be here. I'm I'm safe. I'm uh, looking forward to the future. Summers are here now. It is officially uh, hot as Hades. <laughs> <laughs> Although I know, I know it's going to get hotter here in Pakistan. Um, I think one of the, uh, we were going to talk about a number of things, uh, including my vision for a trouble-free society. That's essentially the topic for today. Trouble. I'm saying that correctly, right? Trouble or trouble? <laughs> it's a great word. I use it on a regular basis, uh, especially uh, being, learning it while I'm from my friends here in Pakistan. And uh, a lot of people ask me, okay, what's the definition of trouble? And uh, as far as I know, there is, and again, I could stand corrected, but as far as I know, there is no actual live, or excuse me, no literal translation of trouble to the English language. It's a person that, exhibits such idiotic behavior that you would know it when you see it, right? <laughs> or such strange behavior, I suppose. Uh, if any of you have any uh, 
comments or suggestions or alternate definitions of what a trouble means, please do share. Um, well, hey, Jay, watching, okay, so Jay Khan is apparently watching me from Germany. That's awesome. My mother's side of the family is German. So, Sprechen Sie Deutsche? Jay, I'm sure you must if you're living uh, in Germany. It's a beautiful country. I uh, haven't had a chance to explore it in its entirety, but I've been there a few times. So, um, in any case, ah, so a question, how are you and your health? I'm doing well. I'm healthy. I, when I flew back in from the United States to Pakistan in February, I was tested uh, for COVID. I was alhamdulillah negative and uh, we're eating well. We're enjoying decent weather here in Islamabad. I'm healthy, I'm fit. I just had calls with my family. They are nurses and healthcare practitioners that are working on the front lines in America. So please, I ask you say a prayer for them to remain healthy and to help keep others healthy um, as well. Hi Amir, how are you? <laughs> And my buddy Amir is online. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I'm doing really, really well. It's, uh, I know this is a very scary time for a lot of people, and it's a bit nerve-wracking as well. I have a lot of personal changes and professional changes taking place. Um, but let me wrap up uh, or summarize what I originally wanted to talk about, my vision for a jubble free society. Um, we have a term in America called uh, that we use for people who don't exhibit, how shall I say, the most intelligent of behavior. We call them knuckleheads. So I would assume that a knucklehead and a chubble are fairly similar. <laughs> okay, Dika. Um, is Sayyid is saying chubble free means tarot free Pakistan. I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Um, yeah, so my vision for a trouble free society or a knucklehead free society is the ability for all of us to be able to express ourselves respectfully and to respectfully disagree. There is unfortunately a lot of negativity on social media and I see a lot of people hiding behind fake profiles. I see a lot of individuals hiding behind uh, their, what they, what they choose to identify as a member of the vulnerable populations, whether they are identify as a different sexual orientation or they identify as a different religion or a different belief system, whatever the situation is. I believe that we are all equal and we can have discussions about topics and discuss them rationally and even disagree and it's completely healthy, it's perfectly normal. Uh, for those that are mentioning recent sensitive topics including those that um, identify uh, in a different capacity, uh, these topics only remain sensitive if we sweep them under the rug. We have to discuss sensitive topics so that we can learn from one another and then we can hope to improve society. What I choose to believe uh, as it relates to my faith or what my belief system is between me and my God and what you choose to believe is between you and your God. I don't care if you're gay, straight, bi, Thai, black, white, it doesn't matter to me however you choose to identify the society that I hope that we choose, that we live in, that we evolve, that evolves. And being in America and Pakistan, this is a little bit challenging because I am living in a culture that's very different in many ways from what I am accustomed to. But I would love more than anything to see Pakistan succeed. I, can, I see Pakistan as my second home. I have learned so much from being here in Pakistan that you have no idea how grateful I am um, to Pakistan. It's, it's always in my heart. And I have, I have to say a, a very sincere about Shukriya to Middle Pakistan. It's, um, and 
Pakistan ke khoobsurat logo to the beautiful people of Pakistan. You have taught me so many amazing and beautiful things that I will forever be grateful to you. Um, that said, there are, as we know, a number of challenging things happening uh, in Pakistan as is around the world. We have more in common than we do differences. And I want to see Pakistan continue to succeed. And that means being able to discuss topics that have historically been considered sensitive or that people get emotional about. If we can remove the emotion a little bit, particularly around these sensitive topics and think rationally and logically and how we can help various cultures or uh, various aspects of society that identify slightly differently uh, or in some cases massively differently from mainstream society. This is going to be one of the biggest things that can help Pakistan progress, in my opinion. Um, so, oh, hello, Ayas, uh, watching from Austria, Vienna. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're having a wonderful Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, and Usman Mirza, you're asking me, when did I convert? Okay, so Usman is asking me from Paris. Hello, Usman. Assalamu alaikum, Kale. Um, I have not converted to Islam. <clears throat> Is that what you are asking me? When did I convert to Islam? I have not converted. I have most of my friends here in Pakistan are uh, Muslim, and we have a wonderful time, and I've been to uh, many mosques, and I have enjoyed learning a great deal about the Islamic faith. Um, so, okay, I'll take a few more questions. You guys are asking me, huh, how has been the post-recovery? And someone is, oh, watching me from the Margali Hills of Islamabad, Syed. Hello, Syed, how are you? And Mohsen from Ontario. Well, we have a lot of people from around the world. Do you guys um, have any questions for me while I'm online? And if you are following uh, the Twitter conversation, if you have any specific questions in terms of wanting clarification, uh, in terms of what I was talking about uh, regarding uh, the Pakistan Constitution and how it reads regarding uh, identifying certain segments of society as religious minorities or if they should be protected or, or changing, for example, <clears throat> the name of the uh, Religious Minority uh, Commission. There are some groups, particularly the Ahmadiyya community, that does not wish to be referred to as religious minority. And I know for a lot of you, this is a very sensitive topic, uh, but let me just get this out there. Uh, what I would simply say is before you get emotional or before you get upset or before you uh, react, and leave a negative comment that's going to be read by a lot of people. There are many people around the world that uh, do not want to see Pakistan, do, that do not want to see Pakistan succeed. Honestly, I think we all know that. Hey Salah, how are you? I'm glad you're online. <laughs> um, you, you came on just in time, my friend. Senge? <laughs> I use my little bit of bash though. Um, Saad Baloch. Okay, so Saad Baloch is saying, I am not Pakistani. He's asking, who's given me permission to talk about sensitive issues of Pakistan? Well, excuse me, Saad. Who are you? I've been living in Pakistan for a number of years. I don't claim to know everything. I am a student learning but I have my experiences and I have my opinions and I will share them when I feel like it's appropriate. Take a nap, okay? So I don't need your permission. As a woman talking to a man, I have a voice. And there are many women here in Pakistan whose voices are suppressed by men with that kind of attitude. I see right through that, my friend. So if you want to have 
a dialogue, if you want to be a part of this conversation, that's wonderful. I welcome it. But don't question me as a woman, and don't question me as a foreigner. I've been here long enough to know. I'm pretty much half Pakistani. So if you don't like it, you're welcome to leave. But on behalf of all the women that I've met here in Pakistan, we have voices and we will not be suppressed. Tikaji, so I wish you could have us if you cannot abide by the rules of our conversation. Now, it's a sensitive issue. Yes, we know that, but why is it a sensitive issue? It's only a sensitive issue if you make it a sensitive issue. If I get upset or irrational over a subject matter, that means I'm easily controllable. And I want you guys to think about that. I know South Asia is a very emotional region. Pakistanis are very emotional. I understand it. I get it. My family is an emotional family. A lot of people in my family are emotional. I understand it. I identify it coming from the South of the United States. There's nothing wrong with that. But you should also realize that when you are highly emotional and you're not able to rationalize or think about things clearly, then that creates room for others to take advantage of you and to control you. Going back to my comment earlier, if people, there are those who don't want Pakistan to succeed, so they thrive on conflict. They create conflict out of nothing. And regarding this matter, as I was saying on Twitter, if the members of the Ahmadiyya community do not wish to be identified as religious minorities, can the Constitution be amended in such a way to where people don't have to identify what faith they are? For God's sakes, individuals of the third gender are able to self-identify in a way that they see fit. What does it matter? if someone doesn't want to identify as a religious minority. That's a bone of contention. That is a controversial point here in Pakistan for a lot of people. And those that don't want to see Pakistan succeed use this against Pakistan. So until Pakistanis can set aside their highly emotional um, thoughts regarding this matter, you need legal clinical, rational individuals to sit on this and think, how can we resolve this matter? Otherwise, it will continue to be a chronic, pervasive issue for Pakistan. And I don't want to see that. It's like Kashmir. It's a, it's a region, a disputed territory. How do you deal with that with India? Kashmir, Palestine. Palestine, Israel, Kashmir is sandwiched between India and Pakistan. Kashmiris have a unique, own unique self-identity. Kashmiris are neither Indian or neither Pakistani. They are Kashmiri. Kashmiriyat should be promoted and their right to self-determination. This is what I've been hearing for the past 11 years that I've been in Pakistan. Let them have their own self-identity. Embrace that. Embrace that. The flag, the Pakistani flag with the white banner and the crescent, the green and the white, what does the white mean? The white stands for religious minorities or those with different belief systems. It would not, the Pakistani flag would not be the same if it were completely green, now would it? And I understand the members of the Ahmadiyya community do not wish to be identified as religious minorities. It's been a catch-22, <coughs> excuse me. It's been a problem for Pakistan for a very long time. But it is solvable if the right minds get together and set aside their emotions. Now, I love you, Pakistan. So for those who get upset because I'm talking about this matter, know that I am speaking from a place, a genuine place where I want you to succeed. So let's see what we can do together. Let's make this a conversation that's normal. It shouldn't be sensitive anymore because if things are sensitive, people don't talk about them. If people don't talk about them, things don't get solved, right? This is basic psychology. 
So anyone that's telling you that this is a highly sensitive matter and we shouldn't talk about it is someone that's either ignorant and doesn't know better or that's what they've heard. So they're mouthing the same thing that they've been taught or they don't want the problem to be solved. Some people are addicted to conflict, either because of a mental issue or because they benefit from it. So let's don't give those people any more room. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about um, the Amadea community. I've met many great people from the Amadea community. I've also met some assholes, to be quite honest about it. I've had two mistreat me horribly, and I'm being completely honest when I say this. Unfortunately, I don't uh, wish to um, sorry, I forgot to turn off my WhatsApp, so let me do this. I don't wish to ever put a label on someone or any group because of a bad experience that I've had from a few people. I am not anti anyone, and I want to be very clear about that. I was raised a Christian, but I love learning about different faiths. I love learning about Islam, and I love learning about the different sects in Islam, like as there are in Christianity. This is something that brings my heart joy. But I ask all of you, as a friend of Pakistan, to just think about this. For those who said, oh, now you've got some fame in Pakistan, now you want to try to put your real agenda out there. This isn't my real agenda. You gotta seriously, give me a fucking break, honestly. I have always wanted Pakistan to succeed. What benefit do I get out of trying to push anything down anyone's throat? I don't want you to try to convert me to Islam. I'm not going to try to push anything down your throat. I'm just simply saying as an outsider, as someone that's not emotionally invested or that's not been bombarded with this sensitive topic like you all have, I can see things from a broader perspective. And I've spoken to people about this issue from all over the world. So the issue, the conflict, is the bigger issue, and it can be solved. So I hope that those who know me, and I know that there are many of you watching that know me personally, um, that have known me for a very long time, there are those that are convinced that there's a Sazish and I am a Jesus, whatever, Kuchni Yad, give me a break. <laughs> I don't care anymore. You guys can call me whatever Jesus you want to call me. I consider that a compliment. Um, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Just make sure that part of my, my benefits, I get mangoes in the upcoming seasons. Uh, by the way, the cherries, I'm expecting a really nice cherry delivery from one of my friends in Gilgit. Gilgit. Uh, I cannot wait. So as long as I continue to get my very, very serious payouts and the local fruits and the citruses and so forth, I'll be happy. Okay, um, so you guys, oh, well, we have a lot of questions over here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I see uh, a few folks, someone said, Karianis are Pakistanis and are Muslims. Does not matter what Pakistan think of them? Okay, I, I some uh, I know consider Kariani, Kariani uh, to be the pejorative or a negative uh, slight towards members of the Ahmadiyya community. And so for that reason, I don't uh, use that uh, phrase, but I understand what you're saying. Um, and Usman, you make a very uh, great point. Pakistan is a great place out of all the places, except for a couple of bunch of uh, people like Saad. <laughs> High five. Hi. <laughs> Osman, Bajan, uh, Zabradast. <laughs> that was an awesome comment. <laughs> Salah? Okay, yeah, I see your comment. Yeah, my, my this session is literally about, uh, you know, trying to uh, make sure that we improve our society around us by improving, by, by having a trouble-free society. And there's one uh, chucklehead on Twitter that says that I should start with me because he says I'm a big trouble. 
Um, I guess, okay, I never thought of myself as a trouble. Maybe I am. Uh, you guys tell me. Um, <laughs> Usman, okay, so Usman says, I wasted four minutes on six sod. Well, I thank you for giving him a right answer. Okay, Igdo Teen Chad. So you're saying I wasted Chad minutes. Is that Chad Pakistani minutes? <laughs> no. No, I think not. Uh, okay. Yes. All right. So I'll take a few more questions and I'll end this. Um, I want to say to uh, all of you before I wrap this up, from my heart to all of you, from uh, Balochistan to Sen to Punjab to the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, to Gilgit Pakistan, Kashmir. Uh, here in Islamabad, I've had so many more amazing experiences than I have uh, negative experiences. And uh, I hope to, inshallah, uh, share some very positive news uh, with you all in the near future. I will give you an opportunity to guess. I have some very um, interesting positive news to share. Um, and I'm thrilled because these things that have happened for me have happened in Pakistan. Pakistan has been struggling for a long time against a lot of forces that do not want it to see it, it succeed. And I do. So I'm one Pagalgori, Tikana. So I'm one Pagalgori that wants to see Pakistan succeed. Um, all right, so I'm going to wrap this up. Do you guys have? Any more questions for me? Uh, Amir asked me to come to KP. Uh, yeah, I have been all over KP. When I speak Urdu, uh, people tell me I speak it with a Pakhto accent. Samaja? Okay. And, okay. Uh, Riz Ali, hey Cynthia, how you doing? Best of luck for your vision. I like the word you use, Chabal. Uh, best wishes. Thank you so much, Riz. I appreciate you. I think that we all secretly or not so secretly hope for a shovel free society um anything else you guys want to ask me while i'm here uh anything i get all these messages and pings and so forth uh so i have a little bit of uh, more free time okay so let me ask you guys this for my next uh online session let's say it's in about a week what would you like to see me talk about what questions do you have what should be the topic of conversation uh, for next week. And do we like Friday evening? Is Friday evening this time a good time for you guys? Someone asked me, where am I now? Okay, well, I am in Islamabad, Pakistan. Where are you, Kizer? That's the question. Thank you, Atifa Rizvi. I appreciate your comment that I don't have to convert. Atifa says, you don't have to convert. You are fine, whatever you are. Oh, Shukriya. That is super, super nice of you. I appreciate that. My family appreciates that, I'm sure. Um, and I think we were all created by the same God. So I'm sure he appreciates that as well. Um, Chaudhry Asif. Hello, respected sister. How are you? I'm doing very fine, Asif. Mirabani, Bhat Shukriya. Kya you are doing a really good job and a great favor to Pakistan. God bless you and your family. Love and prayers are always with you. Thank you so much, Asa Chaudhary. Mirabani, Baud Shukriya. You're very kind. All right, guys. So, um, oh, I have a question from Noman Rana. Why are you so obsessed with Karyanis? Leave them alone. They are the most stupid people on earth. They always love to play the victim card. They are living a luxurious life in Rab Rabwa. I think you mean Rabwa with all the basic facilities. Okay. Okay, Noman, first of all, assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak to you. First of all, I am not obsessed with members of the Ahmadiyya community. I was tagged on a number of comments on Twitter regarding members of the Ahmadiyya community. And as I said earlier, uh, it is my understanding that the term Qadiani is considered pejorative for members of the Ahmadiyya community. It is considered by some 
to be an insult to them, so I do not use that term. And I have requested that all those that participate in this conversation be respectful. It does not reflect well on you or your faith or your belief system to call anyone stupid uh, or anything along those lines. Let's keep the conversation polite. Let's keep it respectful. You're willing to ask me anything as long as it's respectful and mindful and we don't attack anyone else because that's not okay with me. Okay, anything else? Yes, Waka's header. Pakistan is a peaceful country and we respect all minorities. Uh, Jewish, but it's okay. Yep, yep. You know, it's, uh, I understand that the vast majority of the Pakistani population use some of these as non-Muslims. I understand that. And these are things that we have to uh, discuss in the open. Because the more we discuss it the rationally, the more we learn about it. Thank you, Salah. Uh, Salah says, we know you're doing a great job. Uh, there's some attention seekers, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Someone just said, just so get mangoes. Oh, come on, God. What is this? Jesus, don't get mangoes. Did you not know that I am the minister? I am the honorary minister of mangoes. No, I I do hope to receive at least four or five crates of chances <clears throat> this season. I had about ten last season. I had so many mangoes I couldn't eat all of them. I was giving them away. I was making mango ice cream. I was making mango tea. I was God. I had mangoes coming out of my ears at one point. Acha. Okay, uh, so guys, thank you so much uh, for your time. I hope I provided a little bit of clarification for what we were talking about on Twitter. If you're not familiar with, or if you're not on Twitter, if you don't know what we're talking about, my handle is at Cynthia D. Ritchie. That's where I have most of my what is What is the term for battles, my Twitter fights? <laughs> I'm generally a peaceful person, but I do get into occasional arguments on Twitter. Pata? Is it Pata? Yeah? Uh, acha. Anyway, okay. Um, oh, yeah, so Chaudhary's mom was asking about if the um, my iftar with Marvy and company. <laughs> God, seriously, you know that that's sarcasm, right? So a lot of the time I'm very sarcastic. I, a lot of Pakistanis don't understand the concept of sarcasm because Marvi, uh, Mimnon, although I cannot speak for anyone else, but I will assume that Marvi, Mimnon, and Gul, and Mary Minawaz are probably not fans of me. So when I offered to share my uh, thoughts about sharing an iftar with them, it was a bit on the sarcastic side. Um, and perhaps we can discuss that a little bit next time. If they want to invite me, I think that would be one of the most freaking interesting conversations of our lives, don't you think? And I think we should probably uh, record that as well because everyone would want to watch that, I'm quite sure. Um, yeah, okay, anything else? Salam Baloshi, thank you so much. I wish people understand what you're trying to do. Best of luck. Salman, thank you so much. I appreciate your commentary. My ultimate goal is that uh, Pakistan succeeds and I know there are those outside of Pakistan that have best interest in creating conflicts for, for, for the country and uh, upsetting or creating the, a fitna or some unrest in the region that's really, really unnecessary. And I think the less uh, we, we don't, the less we make of it as an issue, but also place importance uh, on how we can relabel people and include individuals uh, in our society, how we need, we need fresh thinking. The youth of this country, I have the greatest respect for, and I have the greatest hope in, in terms of turning this country around, hopefully in the very near future. In the same way for America. America is complete shit right now, excuse my language. Um, and there's so many awful, awful things happening in our country. I love my country. I'm an American. But there's so many things happening right now that are just um, unbelievably screwed up. And the media, the media is making things much, much worse. It's making things appear much, much worse than they actually are, much like the media here in Pakistan, right? So um, 
I appreciate all of you for joining and I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic weekend. This is the first of May. Can you believe it? Hallelujah. We're all alive. We're, we're, we're well. We have a lot to be grateful for. Uh, it is not uh, hot as hell right now. Not yet anyway. <laughs> the weather is still lovely here in uh, Pakistan. And uh, I want to thank all of you for your questions and your time. Uh, I really appreciate the ghosts. Um, you guys uh, really give me a great deal of inspiration. There's a few pagals out there. Yes, but I'm also Tora Sa Pagal Hey too, too, right? That's why I'm a Pagal Gori. All right, guys. Mirabani about Shukriya. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon. Have a great night.